You got to remember one thing. We're not shooting Troy here. This is not a $200 million movie. We're doing some kind of thing for the BBC, OK? So it'll be good. Can you explain what America's Most Wanted is and um, what your role is within the program? America's Most Wanted is modeled after Crime Watch UK. Hi, nice to see you. Also We're a and, hunter and, yep. and we try to combine the power of the public with the cooperation of law enforcement and this television power into catching dangerous fugitives, and we've been wildly successful. It's been really incredible. OK, my friend, you can get up and go and have a shower. You're dead and gone right now. But clean, clean him up. And rehearsing, and action. Get back! Get the hell out of here! Back! And action. Get out of here! Get back! Okay, and action. 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 Cut. Uh, let's get him out of the trunk. <laughs> okay. This guy had 13 convictions, two acquittals. He should have never been out. Never. I know, we gotta get no, him serious. Hold on, hold on, okay. Hold on. Enough already! Does it take Agatha Christie to solve this murder or what? Huh? You know, 90% of 90% of the tips we get are not good. Right. Just statistically, not everybody can be right. Exactly. But um, you know, that 10%, you know, and then that 1% of the 10% that's <laughs> just, you know, it's This is who you're looking this for. This is exactly who you're looking right. for. Here's where he lives. Okay, so anyway, we survived, the ratings were okay. We'll probably do the same thing. This week, because what was the whole tire iron incident all about? Do you remember? Over a woman. Over a woman? Yeah. So a guy cracked him in the head with a tire iron and Catch. damaged his I brain. I think we're going to have probably eight silhouetted interviews. No one's going to go on camera here. Maybe not. We'll see uh, what we can do with that. What would you bite the bullet? I mean, those are two pretty good stories, especially if you got Kindle going mm -hmm. with a you know house on fire right off the top. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty good act one stuff. Although Nobody's saying, but he was such a you know a kind, warm person, right? Yeah, no. No. I love the little, little, little girl, but what he did, I didn't have nothing to do with. Were you surprised that he killed them? Yes, I was. I was overpowered. That's the picture we put out. I mean, you can see in the face, oh but I mean, right. he looks completely different. Right. I mean, the hair, especially. Totally. They got him. Congratulations. Thanks, Edge. Thank you so much. If it hadn't been for you guys, it wouldn't have happened. Hello, you've reached the office of Lance Heflin, executive producer for the television show America's Most Wanted. You know, a lot of the stories that we get just come from the people who watch the show, from cops, from victims, uh, people who, who are concerned about things that are happening in their own lives. They tell our reporters, they put it together, boil it down into a concise sort of pitch, they take it into a big meeting. He was arrested for murder before. I think it looks like another marijuana, some marijuana. Domestic battery. Right. Oh, here's one, aggravated battery with a firearm. Another domestic battery. Uh, another battery. Good lord. He is a thug. Wish me luck. Our meeting's at 2 o'clock. Wish you big luck. So I hope the video helps. We have him on home video, which I will show you. This is our guy, Murder, right there. You can see his friend's got something in his hand that could or could not be a gun. Winky dresses up like a woman and literally walks down the street, walks right up to the guy and shoots he the guy twice. He got Lance. He dresses like a woman. Uh. And then he ran away? Yeah, it's like a woman. Pick up his dress. <laughs> and he is? And he is. That's pretty good. But we could go out with the U.S. Customs cigarette boats and do entry and intervention as boats are docking in the port of Miami. We can get a little action with them jumping on board. John vested with the U.S. Customs looking for drugs. In our first case tonight, we're going after a guy who knows a lot about boats like this. He used to build them, but now he's on the run. And we're going to have to go full throttle to catch him. We got 900 ponies that want to go. nothing wrong with catching somebody on Sunday morning or next week or whatever, but we love to be able to catch them on Saturday night. And what makes you think that it's them? By the sketch? Okay, and if you have any other further information, you call us back? Absolutely not. We're not going to jeopardize your safety by giving up your name. Okay? She's also been looking for him for child support for like the last year. So, oh, so you, have a, we have, you have a name? Yeah. We got a name. When Stoneman and Kelly went on the run, catching them became my number one priority. We profiled them a half dozen times. 
How, I, how have we not caught Stoneman and Kelly yet? I just can't. They don't have, they're not mafia, they're not drug dealers, they don't have any resources, they're two scumbags. Where the hell are they? We told you that Stoneman and Kelly were driving a gray Saturn with Ohio plates. Right on Saturday, somebody called from Florida and said they saw the car on a highway at 8.30. We had 19 counties on high alert. At this point, I think they're dumb and they're lucky. I mean, I don't know how they've stayed out just of them. Keep, uh, You can't do both. <laughs> I mean, you can't be dumb and lucky at the same time. I mean, by now, if they were that and dumb... But if there was, it would be a term like dumb luck. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but, Are we getting any solid tips? I'll bet we haven't... Have we gotten yeah, one tip that they were in a trailer park or in a motel? Our caller told us exactly where we could find that car. So who contacted us was the, uh, the employee's friend. Right. Because he said, you know, I saw these folks in Marriage Was Wanted, they're bringing the car. Like, so tonight, we can finally make the announcement I've waited so long for. Thanks to your tips and some great work by ICE and the Toronto Fugitive Task Force, the two fugitives on the top of my list are now in custody. And God willing, they'll never harm another child. Call Interpol. Maybe to see if they've got, you know, red flags out of... Was Cecil of a ladies' man or...? Oh, Lord, no. Women couldn't stand him. <laughs> he was too aggravating. Would you be willing to come onto our show and tell him to give himself up? Yes. You would? Okay. You know, I get calls from people from all over the country who hear about a story, but a lot of time I get calls from John Walsh, who has heard about a story, and it gets under his skin, and he can't let it go, and he really wants to do it. So we do it, and um, a lot of times things get solved that way. Monica Rivera Valdezan had come to Florida from Peru. Hoping she was out. She always went for a walk in this kind of safe Boca neighborhood at night and stuff like this. And it was horrible what the media down there, you know, said, did she run off with a guy? And they found her body the day before yesterday. You know, she dumped in a pretty nice area, too. But whoever killed her, tortured her, and didn't kill her there, just dumped her body. Cops say the killer covered his tracks well. They couldn't find any useful clues at the crime scene. And the media, you know, it's just brutal. Did the questions, the unanswered questions. Did she run off? Did she meet somebody? Did she get married? You know, the poor lady got abducted and raped and tortured. It's just, anyway. Remind me to ask Lance to look into it, because it's a big case in, in Boca and West Palm. A lot of police agencies and totally don't have a clue. So let's do our best to get justice for Monica and her family by finding this dirt bag and taking them down tonight. Lance, I'm so glad we're doing this story. Oh, it's is two. he a fugitive? He is a fugitive. We'll make him a cool-looking fugitive. Cool. But okay. I think that I think that's going to work. That don't you think? For that? It, it's just it's a sin. What happened? Pause right there. Okay. You need to flip this video to go with this, because the crime occurred. You know, let's look at the crime. You know, around 6:30 on a Friday morning. We can't put on shows where all the fugitives. Or minorities. Just All right. Keep looking. Two weeks ago, you saw my 10 most wanted fugitives for 2003, my annual worst of the worst. Well, tonight, the worst of them all is behind bars. I couldn't be happier. OK, so this is a generic slime ball. Generic slime ball. <clears throat> generic scumbag slime ball dirt bag. Uh, flip that, make your punchline the punchline. Well, tonight, I couldn't be happier because the worst of them all is behind bars. Okay. Two weeks ago, you saw my 10 most wanted fugitives for 2003, my annual worst of the worst. Well, tonight, I couldn't be happier because the worst of them all is behind bars. Oh. Good evening. Tonight, let's get ready to roll. We're taking down some bad guys. We're taking down some, we're taking some bad guys downtown. What does that mean? What the hell does that mean? We're taking, I'm going with some bad guys like out for a drink downtown or? It's that finger, watch that finger. It's the magic wand of justice on America's most wanted. Here we go, this is great. And John, action. I'm John Walsh. Thanks a lot for watching tonight. And remember, you can make a difference.